Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Welcome to this virtual gathering of Washington Avenue Christian Church. My name is Nathan Russell, and I serve as the senior pastor here. During this time of worship, we will sing, pray, and hear the word proclaimed. Following the meditation, we will have time to reflect through an activity, share in prayer, communion, and give our offering. Please leave a comment on the video and let us know who you are and your viewing location and how you found us. You can also take a picture and show us how you're worshiping while sheltering in place. The hashtags for tonight's service are virtual worship and hashtag salvation. And remember to tag the church using at WACC E L Y R I A. The psalmists of Scripture tell us that God hears the prayers of God's people. So let us turn to God in song, petition, and even in the prayer of silence. Our worship is about, is about to begin. So, beloved, I say to you, wherever you may be, Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord.
of Psalm 116, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19. I love the Lord because God has heard my voice and my supplications, because God inclined the divine ear to me. Therefore, I will call on the Holy One as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol lay hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Ancient of Days for all God's bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the giver of life in the presence of all God's people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of God's faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving maid. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the giver of life in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the creator of all for poetry that points to the truth beyond words. Thanks be to God. Poetry is saving my life right now. I'm not talking about big, bold, all caps, salvation, but poems are keeping me going in the midst of the pandemic. Composers of these lyrics, these poets, They are pilgrims on a journey who are trying to evoke something true, something beautiful, something meaningful that cannot be captured in the flatness of ordinary prose. Walter Brueggemann says we live in a prose flattened world one that is organized in settled formulae, memos, and I'd add to that, daily press conferences. Poetry is not limited to rhyme, rhythm, or meter, but language that moves like Bob Feller's fastball, that that jumps at the right moment, that breaks open old worlds with surprises, abrasion, and pace. If you saw that 1997 movie, Contact, Jodie Foster's character says upon reaching the new world, they should have sent a poet. We need poets right now, poets of Psalms, both ancient and new, to remind us of who we are, who God is, that we are not alone, and that God's salvation is at hand. Though it's impossible to date or locate Psalm 116 or determine its author, we know that the poet has felt the snare of death. Whether she went out with a face mask on or gloves adhered to her hands, well, that's anybody's guess. But she felt that death surrounded her. She suffered distress and anguish. If it was sickness, she tested positive. If it was emotional distress, she took seriously her mental health and well-being. If it was an unknown assailant, she was held captive. But then she writes, Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Holy One, I pray, save my life. All of us are praying that prayer right now, aren't we? O God, I pray, save my life. Protect me from a virus. Be with me when I have to go out and for the next two weeks that I count down to see if I somehow happen to catch the novel coronavirus. 
Though it is right that we should pray for ourselves, we're also praying for those we love. Oh, holy God, I pray, save the life of my friend, my parent, my sibling, my partner, my neighbor. Oh, holy God, I pray, save the life of my church. Save the life of this world. Salvation right now looks to me like a vaccine, but that's a year to 18 months away, and I don't want to wait that long. And just because a vaccine has been scientifically tested and proven effective, that doesn't mean that it's accessible to the world's population. So maybe salvation looks like zero new infections and zero deaths. Salvation looks like a return to normal or to at least where we were on March 1st. This is the salvation I want and the salvation I think our church and our world need. However, sometimes the salvation we think we want is not the salvation we need. We cannot fix this pandemic. We are not in control. We cannot save ourselves, each other, our church, or our world. The most we can do is kind of shelter in place and reduce the risk of infection. Salvation, on the other hand, is God's work, not yours or mine. I do wish, though, that God would hurry it up a bit. People are dying. People are suffering. But because salvation is not ours to do, we really cannot rush it. Salvation, big, bold, all caps, salvation happens when God gets everything God wants, when all is made right, when all is just, when everything and everyone is saved. That day is surely coming, says the Holy One. I just have no idea, none whatsoever, when it will be, and I have no control of when it might finally happen. But, come to think of it, God is saving us even now in ways that we cannot imagine or perhaps in ways we do not even notice. These are small salvations that do not appear in big, bold capital letters. A well-written poem that gives us the voice to pray Oh, God, save my life. That is salvific. A Skype or Zoom meeting with a friend, colleague, mentor. Those are moments of salvation. An unexpected email, phone call, or text can, can feel like it's enough salvation for us to just make it another day. Then there's the card in the mail, handwritten, with a first-class stamp on it, and that can be a saving grace for all of us. Though we are known for our gray skies here in Northeast Ohio, the sun breaking through the clouds to remind us that it is still there can be a sign of salvation. Sometimes we're so preoccupied with the salvation we've determined that we need, that we want, or even the salvation that God will finally get one day, that we miss the multiple and myriad ways in which God is saving us in the present, all of which remind us that God has not left us to our own devices or to suffer this pandemic alone. God is not saving us so that we can get back to normal, so that we can go back to the way that things were, but so that we can make new vows, new promises by which to live in new ways that we have yet to imagine. We will get there, I promise. We are already on the way. 
We'll write some poetry too, just like the psalmist celebrating God's salvation. We'll point to a truth that transcends words. But for now, though it feels that we're caught in the loop of a prayer, a poem, a song that is on repeat. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life, save my friends and family, save Christ church, save our world. That is okay. In fact, it's more than okay. We practice our faith when we cry out, help me, save us. God will hear us as we pray. And God will save the world that God still loves. It will happen. This salvation is here, small s. And the big salvation, the one in big, bold, capital letters, that salvation, too, is on its way. Amen. May we pray together. We are calling upon you, O Holy One, to save us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. Keep safe your world that you still love as we navigate a global pandemic. Be with us while we are at home and guide us when we have to go out. Watch over us as we also care for our family and friends, our church and the earth. In this time of physical distance, help us to know that you are saving each and every day for us. Spark our imagination for creative ways in which we can return to you our promises and vows. We ask this in the name of the one who saves. Amen.
come to this time of reflection, I invite you to write a poem. Now, it may have been a while since you've written the lyric and verse, that's quite all right. And if it feels a bit intimidating, let Google be your friend and go on a poem search. Find one, find verse and lyrics, write them that enables you to pray alongside the psalmist and all the people of the world. Help us, O oh God, and save our life. You can take the poem that you write and keep it with you, or perhaps post it and make it shareable so that we can pray your poem, your prayer, with you just as we have done the psalm. And God will hear these prayers, the poems that we make, and God will save us. We also invite you to participate in the offering using the link in the below video description. And if you would like, we would be absolutely joy-filled to pray with you during this time in ways that you find meaningful and helpful. There's also a link for you to submit your prayer requests online, and they become part of the prayers of the people of this church. And then finally, we invite you to participate in the Sacrament of Communion. This is a supper in which God and the resurrected Christ is being made known in all the places that bread is broken and wine outpoured. We are saved at this table. So find gifts of bread and cup, whatever you have available to you. And may the living Christ be made known. I promise it will be salvific. A small uh, S salvation that points us to the salvation that God will one day have for the world that God still loves. On the night Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room, he first washed his hands, and then he took gifts that were there on the table, first a piece of bread, and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks for it, he said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are being saved by God. Come, beloved, everything is ready.
And now, beloved, our service of worship is ending, but our participation in the mission and ministry of God never ends. Keep praying. Oh God, save me. Save us. Save our world. Salvation is here. And God's ultimate salvation is on the way. It is for you and for the world that God still loves. Amen.